Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I was recently contacted by a friend who received a replica Haunted Mansion gate plaque prop as a gift, but the paint job left a little something to be desired. And knowing how much I enjoy working on Haunted Mansion projects, I gladly accepted the challenge of giving it a more realistic, park accurate paint job. So let's get started. First things first, let's check out its original paint job. Now before anyone says anything, it's my understanding that this paint looked awesome under blacklight but my friend wanted something that looked a bit more authentic to the park circa 1975. To get started, I needed to give it a base coat of a dark blue-green color. This would cover up the existing paint and will act as a great undertone for the verdigris patina that I'll eventually be replicating. So I grabbed some black and teal acrylic paint and mixed up a color for the base, and then thinned it out with a bit of window cleaner since it does a better job thinning paint than just water. When it reached a milk-like consistency, it was time to break out my airbrush and start painting. Using the airbrush for this step is great because it doesn't create any texture. Plus you use quite a bit less paint and can get into all the tight spaces much more easily than you could with a brush. It's important to turn your piece around to make sure that you're not missing any areas. A Lazy Susan is great for this. I would have used mine, but I was being a lazy Derek. When I was happy with the base coat, I allowed it to dry before applying a satin clear coat to protect the paint. Next up is the Patina Wash. This is a favorite of mine, and if you've been a longtime subscriber, you'll have seen this technique before. I'll start by tilting the plaque up against the wall, before thinning out this patina-colored acrylic paint with water and applying it to the plaque with a spray bottle. You can use any size spray bottle you have, I just happen to have this size empty. Start to spray down the entire plaque with the paint and let it run down the face. This'll take multiple applications. You may find that some of the paint is pooling, so tip your piece forward to allow the paint to run out of the recesses, or grab a rag and blot up any of the undesirable areas before they dry. Now I would typically let the paint dry on its own, but it was a cool day and I eventually got impatient. So I grabbed my shop hair dryer to help speed up the process and to push some of the paint out of the recesses, which ended up working out really well. When I felt like the patina was good, I let it dry for about 15 minutes before switching over to a bronze spray paint. This paint will just be dusted over the top of the plaque, so keep a 16 to 18 inch distance and be sure to keep the can moving at all times. It's also important to start spraying away from your piece before moving over it to prevent too heavy an application. This is one of those steps where you'll want to spray a little, take a step back and look at it, spray a little bit more, and repeat until the patina is just slightly showing through. It's a very fine line between too much and not enough. The last step in this repaint is the one thing that will really set it apart, and that's the addition of some antique gold rub and buff highlights. Now I know this is supposed to look like bronze, but this antique gold color really complements the bronze spray paint and helps to highlight the details in the carving. I get a little bit on my fingertip, blot it on a paper towel, and then very gently start to graze the high spots of the plaque with the rub and buff. This is one of those steps that can easily get away from you so it's always better to have very little on your fingertip and have to make multiple passes than to go too heavy since you can't remove it once it's been applied. I like to think about how people might interact with this plaque and those areas where it might see the most contact are the places that get the heaviest amount of rub and buff since they're less likely to patina at the same rate as the untouched areas.
I worked my way around the entire piece until I felt like it had just the right amount, and then I buffed the face with a clean shop towel before applying a final satin clear coat to seal in all the paint, and I'm calling this one finished. You can see how there's varying degrees of metal and patina paint showing through on the plaque, which really helps to make it feel like it's cast in bronze and not just painted. And while it may take longer to do, creating layers in your finish will always make your piece feel more realistic. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully some of these techniques are helpful on projects that you're working on. If they are, Leave me a comment below and tell me all about it. And until then, be sure to like and subscribe, and most importantly, go make something.